Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,431. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to talk about using the XNPV function with the offset and VLOOKUP function to retrieve the correct dates and cash flows for calculating net present value and the internal rate of return. Now, I have an entire 115 video playlist all about the financial functions in Excel. This video right here, video 81, talks about XNPV and XIRR, including the algorithms and how they work. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we want to see how to calculate net present value for five different projects. They each have their required rate of return. If we can't get a rate of return greater than this for each one of these projects, we do not want to undertake that project. Over here in the project column, we have project A listed many times that says these are the irregular dates, and here are the cash flows. Now, the reason we use XNPV or XIRR rather than just the straight NPV or IRR or present value function is because we have irregular time periods here. Now, both the XNPV and XIRR have been around in Excel for a long time. If you have a version before Excel 2007, you have to add a special add-in. But these have been around for a long time. And they're specifically, the X ones are specifically created to deal with irregular time flows. Now, the problem here is I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to manually highlight the dates and cash flows for each set of Project A data points. And then do the same thing down here for the B ones. A, it would take a long time if I had a lot of projects. It's error prone because I'm manually highlighting the ranges. And if I ever sorted or added new data, it would just be a mess. So we want in one formula, just put it in, copy it down, and it automatically knows to get the right cash flows. Now, to get the required rate of return, we'll use the VLOOKUP function. In order to get the correct date for each one of our functions, we're going to use the offset function. And the offset function, you tell it a starting point, and it knows to go down a certain amount of distance. So for project A, it would go highlight this range. If it was project B, it would still offset, but it would know to go down to the starting position where it found the first project B, and then it would know the height of this range because we can count how many project Bs there are here. All right, let's see how to do this. Click in the cell equals X, N, tab. Now the rate, that's where we need to use the VLOOKUP. I'm going to look up project A, comma, within this table. Now, I've already converted these to Excel tables, so when I highlight this, it shows us the name that I gave that table. That table is named RRR for Required Rate of Return. Now, VLOOKUP will find a match in the first column and go over to the second column, get that rate, and bring it back. Now, comma, column, I have to tell VLOOKUP which column one or two has the thing I want to go and get and bring back to the cell. It's the second column, so I type 2, comma. We're doing exact match because we're trying to find exactly project A in the first column. So I either put false or 0, close parentheses. So that VLOOKUP is going to get the correct rate for our XNPV as I copy down. Now, comma, the values and the dates, we're going to use the offset function. Now, the way offset works is, we give it a starting point and how many rows or columns to move away from that starting point, and then the height and width of the range we want. Now, reference, this is for cash flows. So I'm going to click on the column header in this Excel table, and notice what happens. It puts the table formula nomenclature in for what they call a header name, which is our cash flow. Name of the table, and then all of that just means no matter where I copy this, it'll always give me the cell where that cash flow column header or field name is. So that's our starting point, comma. Now rows, that's how many rows from the starting point we want to go up or down. Now we want to go down, so we need to add rows. 
And the way we're going to do that is by using the match function. Now, match allows you to look up a particular item. We're always, as we copy the formula down, going to look up the project name. So we're looking up project A, comma. And we have to tell match where is the list that we're going to try and find project A. Now watch this. I'm going to come over here. And since I want the entire column, this is an Excel table. So very carefully, I hover my cursor at the top part of the project field name, not the selection cursor, but that downward pointing black arrow. I click, and it puts the whole column in for me. Now that's table formula nomenclature, name of the table. That's actually irregular cash flows, ICF, and then in square brackets, the name of the field name, comma. And then we need to tell match to do an exact match. Now the reason that we're doing exact match here, close parentheses. If I think about what match is doing right here, it's looking up project A. Since there's lots of duplicates, by telling it to do exact match, Match is programmed to only find the relative position of the first item. So of course, in this entire list, the first occurrence of Project A is the first item in the list. When it looks up B, it'll literally count on its fingers down to the 11th position. Because we gave it exact match, it ignores all the duplicates and just tells us the relative position of the first item. Now notice that's going to be perfect, because from that starting reference, I count down 11. And that's the new starting position for Project B cash flows. So we use match for number of rows to go down. Now comma, columns, that's how many columns to move to the left or right from the starting position. We do not want to move at all. So I'm going to leave that argument empty, comma, height. For A, we need 10. For B, we need a bunch, and I don't know what it is. But no problem. We can use count ifs to count how many items are in this column that are equal to the project. And that will give us the height of the range for our cash flows. Count ifs. Criteria range, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight using my black downward pointing arrow. Click, and it puts the whole range in, comma. Criteria, boom, there it is as a relative cell reference. So as I copy down, it'll automatically count the correct number of projects, and that will be the height. Close parentheses. So there's the height using count ifs. Width, we don't need to put width in because it'll assume whatever the width of the reference is. And since that's a single cell and we want a single column, the width is going to be 1. So if we leave without it, will work. Close parentheses. Now, in offset, let's review. We used the starting point is the header for cash flows. Number of rows, we're finding the relative position of match, ignoring any duplicates. We don't have any columns to move left or right. And the height, we used count ifs. Now, get this. That whole offset is for finding the right set of values. Now, I've clicked on the screen tip, and I'm going to use Control-C to copy this. Because guess what? When we come to dates, it's exactly the same except for the starting reference point. So I come to the end, comma, dates. I can see that it's bold. I'm going to Control V. Now we see offset right there is in dates. If I click very carefully inside of offset, I do not want that reference for cash flow. So I click on the screen tip. And now I come over and click on date. It put the right starting point reference in. And then, of course, the match is going to do the exact same thing, find the relative position. Height will count how many there are. And boom, the correct range for our dates will be in our XNPV function. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. And what XNPV does it is it does the discounted cash flow analysis on irregular dates and cash flows and gives us a positive, negative, or zero number. Anytime it's positive, we should consider that as a profitable project given our required rate of return. If it's negative like this one, we are definitely not going to take that project unless something changes. Positive, positive, negative. That's NPV. Now, to prove that offset is really getting 
the correct set of cash flows. Let's scroll down and we can see all the Bs. There's all of the cash flows. I'm going to click in cell 032, hit F2 to put it in edit mode, and then click inside the XNPV function. Click on values, and let's use the F9 key to evaluate. And you can see there's the cash flows exactly as they're listed here. And you could go ahead and do that for dates also. Now I'm going to escape because I've hard coded this in, but escape reverts back to the formula that was in the cell before I put it in edit mode, escape. Now XIRR, well guess what? We need the same exact two ranges for cash flows and dates inside of our XIRR function. So watch this. I'm going to come to Values. I'm going to click on the screen tip Values and Control-CC to copy and open up the clipboard. Now, if CC doesn't work, I'm going to click Escape. i got to show you this. This is a, such a useful trick. If CC doesn't work, you actually have to manually come over to Clipboard. And it's helpful because, especially with big formula elements, we can collect them up and paste them in any order we want. But if CC doesn't work, you come down to Options. And there it is. You have to make sure to check that. All right, I'm going to clear this and do it again. F2. Click on Values, Control, CC, and there it is. Now I click on Dates, and that's the offset for dates. Control, C, Dates, Cash Flow. So now I Escape, come over here, Equals. XI tab, the values. I'm going to click on the second one. Those are the values. So there it is. Very carefully, I can move my screen tip if I'm not sure. At the end, comma. There's the dates. I'm clicking not once but twice. It looks like I need to click twice. And there's our dates. Guess sometimes because the IRR algorithm is an iterative process that has to go back and forth to solve. Sometimes if you put a guess in as a starting point, it helps it calculate more quickly. But for us, we're not going to have a problem. So close parentheses. Control-Enter. Double-click and send it down. I'm going to go to the last cell, F2. I'm just making sure that all the cell references are right. I should have done that over here. And look at that that table formula nomenclature for field name at the top is working fine. Same for the table, same for our project relative reference. Now with IRR, you compare. Is this greater than or equal to our required rate of return? It's not, so we do not think we want that project. This one, if we look, 19.56, that's greater than 0.15. So we would consider that project. All right, that was a little fun with XNPV, VLOOKUP, and OFFSET, and even XIRR. Now, of course, I forgot to mention the previous video was 1430, and we saw how to do this exact same scenario, but with DAX functions, either in Excel Power Pivot or Power BI Desktop. All right, we'll see you next video.